you give him vulnerability I don't think he'll be as interesting to the reader. Some arch-villains aren't always that compelling. They're usually pure evil. But when you look at a character like Magneto, you'll find that there's such a vulnerability to him. There's depth. He has a history with Charles Xavier. He has an even deeper history rooted in the Holocaust. Even in Creed II, we enjoy the villains of the film, Drago and his son, because they are vulnerable. The father is dealing with the shame of losing to Rocky, which caused him to lose everything. The son is dealing with his father's shamed legacy, as well as his mother not wanting to be a part of his life. They are the best villains or antagonists since Apollo Creed in the Rocky and Creed franchises because of that. 11 I see myself in everything I write. All the good guys are me. The best way to write great characters is to inject yourself within them in big or small ways. When you can live through those characters' eyes and relate to what they are supposed to be feeling, the characters really write themselves because they are partly you. 12 I always wrote for myself. I figured I'm not that different from other people. If there's a story I like a lot, there's got to be others with similar tastes. Write what makes you laugh. Write what scares you. Write what makes you cheer. Write what makes you feel a certain emotion. That's the only way you can truly write with the idea of making a connection with someone. You can't expect to know what makes others laugh, cry, scream, or cheer. Instead, write for yourself. There are billions of people on this planet. Hundreds of millions of them watch movies. The odds of connecting with someone similar to you are in your favor tenfold. 13. No matter what you write, it's a matter of putting words in a certain order so that the reader will be interested in what you're writing. Screenplays are cinematic. You can't just write scenes and dialogue to move a plot along. It has to be pop. It has to be cinematic. You have to capture the audience's interest by crafting story structure that is compelling and engaging. 14. My first thought is always what can I do that hasn't been done, story-wise. What will this character's objective be, his motivation, his weakness, how can I make an audience care about this guy? That's where the fun comes in. You always have to be pushing the envelope. That's what it takes to get noticed in the film and television industry. Chasing trends or writing your version of what has already been done isn't going to get you anywhere. Hollywood wants scripts that stand out and offer audiences something new. Yes, it can still be familiar, but you have to create that hybrid of familiar but different. And the true fun behind writing is asking those key questions that define the character's struggles, the story's conflicts, and the audience's investment in both. 15. You just have to think up an interesting character and an interesting problem, which it seems as though that character will never be able to solve, or a hurdle that he or she will never be able to overcome, and then you find a clever way for the hero to overcome it at the end. Stan was the master at conceptualizing characters and concepts. And in the end, it's often more simple than you'd think. Create an interesting character and pose an equally interesting problem which they have to solve or deal with, and overcome it or succumb to it. Conflict, conflict, conflict. 16 I had fun with all these characters because I literally knew where they lived, as well as what their personalities were. All that was left for me to do was make up the villains, which was even more fun than making up the heroes. Know your characters. Know how they would react to any given circumstance. Know where they are from. Know what scares them most. Know what makes them happy. It's not enough to just put a cardboard character into a situation. For the audience to really feel that these characters are living and breathing, you need to live in their shoes as you write. And then, yes, have even more fun creating those that are going up against them. 17 You know, my motto is Excelsior. That's an old word that means upward and onward to greater glory. Stan's catchword tells us always to be moving forward in our pursuits of glory. Never let anything drag you down to a full stop. Never let rejection pull you back. And this word is now bittersweet after the passing of a legend. Stan has moved upward and onward to greater glory. 
he'll be missed, but never forgotten. Thanks for the characters and stories, Stan. They will live on forever. And so will your spirit.